Hey, welcome to the Master Tech Lou channel. I am Lou, and today I'm reviewing the Top Don RD Diag 600S. What this guy is, is a four system scanner. It does airbag, engine, transmission, and traction system. It also has a generic OBD2, so you can connect it to any car to find out why the check engine light is on and read some mode six data to help diagnose like O2 sensors and live data for mass airflows and whatnot, you know? So, uh, before you go anywhere, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell. I do reviews on quite a few products, but also I like to give helpful videos on how to's and provide my experience. I've been in the car world for 20 plus years and uh, I like to share that kind of stuff with you guys. So uh, let's talk about the scanner. All right, let's do the unboxing. There is not much to this thing. It's just a user manual, a quick start guide, which is actually very informative. I actually took the time to read it and look through it and it tells you how to use the thing, which is nice. Uh, you don't have to guess at it or practice um, or fail at it. It shows you how to walk, it, it walks you through it. Here is the scanner itself. It's wired, which is, uh, it's not bad. You can only read live data, can't really actuate anything with this, so you don't need to be outside the car, but this is it. Let me go ahead and uh, show you some of the functions of this guy. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug it into this GLC. It's a 2017 Mercedes GLC, and I'll show you how it works with the car and why you would need it. And then from there, we'll walk through all of the individual functions of the scanner. All right, here we go. All right, so plugged into the OBD port, and we got the scanner here. Now you can see this car actually has a check engine light on, so that's a good test subject here. But uh, what we're going to do is... When you plug it in, um, shows the Wi-Fi, it shows the battery voltage of the car, all right? And then of course, when it's plugged into the car, it'll be showing the charge indicator uh, on the scanner. It's actually charging the scanner as it's plugged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me turn the key on with the car engine off. I'm gonna hit diagnosis. I love the auto search method. It just finds the VIN and it automatically picks the car. Sometimes trying to find a German car identification can be a bear if you're not used to working on the brand. Almost all aftermarket scanners are doing this. I think it's visually aesthetic. Just gives you something to look at while you're waiting for the bin to pop up. It does take a little bit of time. So it's going to read the engine transmission and whatever has to do with the transmission function, the airbag, whatever it has to do with the airbag function, and the traction system. So system selection is if I want to go straight to a module. System scan is it's going to find what modules are in the car and report back. And then health report is it's going to find all the modules as the system scan, but then it's also going to check them for fault codes. So we're gonna go ahead and do health report. Quick test is what Mercedes uses as terms for doing the test for failures. Gives you a nice little timer to see how long it's taken. Cool little indicator showing that it's scanning the car. All right, so the ISM is the shift module on the side of the trans, depending on the transmission. This car does not have one. So we're done with the scan and it pulled up an engine module. It pulled up a transmission module. It pulled up the traction module. It pulled up both front seat belts because yes, they are control modules and they talk to each other. And then it brought up the airbag. So even though it's advertised as a four system scanner, okay, four system scanner, it scans whatever has to do with that system, which is nice. So now in here, if we did report, you can scan a QR code to get it. So it shows a nice report of the car. I also emailed it to myself, which was nice. Okay, it shows the fault codes and everything, or you can save it as a PDF. So now let's go and 
I could click that and it shows the faults right there. All right, so you don't really have to go into the module. It puts it all on this home page. It always says switch on ignition, ignition. It, does, it, it can't determine if the key is on or not. All right, so in here, no matter what module you're in, you're gonna get the same options. Read the module information, which is the module serial number, software, data version. All right, this is uh, only time it's good is if you need a part number. Sometimes it shows the part number in there. So we can go back to read fault code. Pretty sure I touched it. Read fault code. So there's the fault codes. All right. And what's nice is when you click on the fault code, it Googles it. All right. Now, I'm not a fan of Googling for information, but that's the only thing you can do with these scanners. In the Mercedes scanner, it gives us tests for the fault codes. And there's other systems we use to put in the fault code to give us the, uh, the testing for that fault code. But this is a good way or the only way you have to finding issues with the codes that you got. So it's nice that once you got internet hooked up, it does Google and brings you to the, uh, you know, information for the fault code. All right, same thing, you do a report from here. So the next option is clear the fault code. And then you got read data stream. So now in data stream, depending on the manufacturer you're looking at, they give you different uh, channels, right? So this is all the actual values that have to do with idling. This is all the actual values that have to do with air fuel. Same thing here in converter, right? And then in here, we can depict which ones we want to see, or you just select all, and then press OK. And then now it shows us all the live data, right? So if you got a fault code, and you know you need to see some live data to go with diagnosing a fault code, this does show it all, which is super, super cool. And while you're in there, you just hit on it and it should pull up the graph. Come on. That one's not doing it. Why is it not doing it? There we go. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but shows the graphing of it kind of touchy give it a second all right so let's try it again or maybe it just takes a second to get it to the graph area we'll see let me start it come on And we can change the data. I'm not sure why it's giving me issues with graphing. You've seen it happen, but well, if there is a sample they can compare it to, it would have one save. This one says none there. Or you combine. So let's try those. Okay, so now we can see the graphs for these. Also, when you're in here, you can pinch and zoom. It changes the values over there. So if, you, if for those of you that are interested in graphing, that can help with that. All right, so that's really all I can show you with uh, the engine module. The rest is all redundant. So if you're to go to the transmission module, same thing. You're gonna do the same screen in all the modules that you're at, right? So we'll just go straight to data stream. And when we're doing a Mercedes, we gotta make sure the oil is at a certain temperature before we check the level. So here's what, uh, what we would look at. And it shows run park. So if I shift it to reverse and then drive and then park. Okay. 
So what's good is you're seeing live data. So you're seeing what the transmission module is seeing and also the temperature of it. Let's see if this one shows us the graph. Might have to disconnect the scanner, hook it back up. But uh, the first time I used it, I hit the graph and it went right to the graphing. So I'm not sure what the difference is here or what I'm doing wrong. All right, so let's back out and check out the traction system. So ESP is what we call our traction systems for electronic stability protection. And same thing, you, again, you're gonna see all these in, in all the modules you go into. Module information, read, clear, and then data stream. So why you would need this for a traction issue is if you had a bad wheel speed sensor. This would help you diagnose that. First, you'd find the fault code for it, and then you'd be able to check the actual data of when you're driving the car. So let me go ahead and move this out of the way. Okay, take the parking brake off. So you got the wheel speeds moving when the car's moving. All right, so if you had one that wasn't reading, then you know that the module is not seeing the data. Then you would know that you either need to check the wheel speed sensor or the wiring to the module to determine if uh, the failure is the sensor, the wiring, or the module. So this is where this comes in handy. Now let's see if this will get the graphing. Why are you being a pain? Let me try compare sample. All right, so let's just try. Oh, not, not compare sample, sorry. Um, combine. Let's try combine. Let's just do one. And we can at least get graphing that way. So if I were to go and put that in gear and move. It shows the graph. So if you were to have a sensor or wiring to the sensor having poor connection once in a while, maybe over bumps, that's how you would catch this. It's because the graph would move up when you're driving and if it cuts out, it would just blip out. So that's where graphing is kind of important. All right, so now let's check out the airbag system. All right, so in this model, we got seatbelts that are actual control modules, and then we got the airbag system. All right, so let's go in there. Now, what we would need when diagnosing an airbag failure or uh, a fault in the airbag control module is the actual circuits to them. What we're looking for is the correct resistance. All right, resistance of between two and five ohms. So, okay, well that one graphed me pretty quick. So if I got a fault code for uh, the front passenger side airbag squib, R1210, and I go in here to look at the live data and it shows seven or eight ohms or one ohm, I can then mess with the connector and wiggle it and see if that changes the value and or I can compare by ohming the wire and the squib to see if that matches up. So that's where live data helps you with this thing. So that's the gist of it when you're using it just to read uh, the data from these control modules. All of these scanners that you get that are going to be a force system, they're gonna operate almost the same. Um, the thing that you're going to probably be attracted to is how it looks, maybe the color of it, maybe the size of it, maybe the the design of it, um, maybe the software, how, how easy it is to use. Some of them take time, some of them are faster. Some of them come with additional options. Like, let me show you what else you can do with this thing. So let me go into the maintenance one. In all of the newer cars, they're putting electronic parking brakes in there. Uh, electronic, electronic parking brake motors on the brake calipers and or a standalone parking brake unit. 
So in order to do the rear brakes, you've got to release it. So you would use a scanner like this if the car doesn't have a manual way to do it. All right. And of course, first you got to make sure the parking brake is off. So the parking brake is off. I'm going to have the key on. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick the car. I'll pause for the updating. All right, then I'm pick passenger car. Now this is gonna scan for the car. Or you can manually select it. All right, so now you should be able to hear it once I activate it. Okay, now I can do the rear brakes. And then when I'm done doing the rear brakes, I would turn the key back on, hook up the scanner, and I would undo it. Awesome. Now there's other functions like the battery reset. You got in some of these newer cars, you replace the battery, you got to reset the module that monitors the battery so it can start detecting the resistance of the battery and or how many amps it charges over time. There's ABS brake bleeding, depending on the car. That is for the parking brake moving back and forth. That is for regener uh, regenerating, uh, or they're doing a regen on the DPF. That is your throttle control. Uh, Volkswagen is good for doing something like that. All right, electronic throttle relearn. We don't do that in a Mercedes. Um, So it shows all the models that would do it. I'll walk through anyways and see what it says. Teaching a throttle valve stop. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that in this car. All right, for the service reset. That's for resetting your service indicator. So like if your car doesn't have a manual way to do it with the steering wheel buttons, you would use a scanner to do it. All right, and all the brands that it would do in there. Steering angle sensor reset. And tire pressure monitor. It's interesting they have this because almost all cars have a way to do it through the dash or like a button in the glove box or something like that. So it shows all the models and then when you're in there, you can pick which model to do. All right, some of the other functions of the scanner is the settings, of course. Feedback to the uh, manufacturer. You can type in your own information, so it'll pop up on your um, on your reports that you make. Turn screenshots on or off. All right, there's all those settings you can play with in there. Feedback. Take the issue that you're having and send it to the manufacturer of the scanner. Folder saves all the reports of the cars that you do. All right, anything else you might save in there? Update is where you go to check to see if you have any software that needs updated. I think they give you, um, I think it's lifetime free updates. Gonna have to check on that. All right, of course, that's a maintenance thing we were just in. It shows you all the maintenance resets that they give you or learning. Repair info. So 
So you got some little database of things in here. Looks like it's walking you through what to do. But I don't even know what those would be for this model. So just showing you all the buttons and what they do while you're in there. All right, so what this is going to be is if you're not sure if it does it for your model, you would go here, put in your model the year and the function you're looking for, and it would tell you yes or no if the scanner is going to do that for you or not. All right, then this is if you want to connect to any car to do, to do the generic OBD2 reading. It's going to find the way that it communicates, and then it's going to connect. All right, and then we can read the fault code, no different than we did with the uh, Mercedes scanner. So here's the difference between a manufacturer fault code and the OBD2. So if you go back to the beginning of the video, you notice that it says a lot more to the fault code than just those numbers, right? So this is generic fault codes that are globally accepted, meaning all around the world. But when you use a Mercedes scanner or a scanner that can communicate with a Mercedes directly, you get a different fault code number, which is P052E71, which talks about the actuator being blocked for the full load crankcase system, right? But you can at least hook this up to any other car you own and get uh, fault codes from it. And then see live data. So it's helpful. It's like a um, expanded OBD2 scanner. So you don't just get fault code, you can actually read live data and stuff too. So that's helpful with other cars. We'll just go home real quick. That's your emission monitors. If you live in a big city and have to do emissions, uh, you can just check this to see if your monitors are done. Because if you've ever been for an emission testing and they kicked you out and told you to leave because your monitors were not completed, this is where you... Uh, We'll check to see if they're they're done and you're ready to go to the mission station. So all my monitors are ready, but none are completed. And we're back to the diagnosis. So that is the whole function of the scan tool. All right, so as far as a review, I like the scanner. I really do. Um, I'm starting to like the Top Don brand. They're new to me. Uh, they're, I haven't really seen them before. I'm just getting into these, to this brand with the jump pack I reviewed and the battery tester and whatnot. So uh, they reached out to me and sent me this uh, Artie Diag to, to give it a shot and see how I feel about it. And then they're working on getting me the Top Don Phoenix. So I'm going to be up, getting up there in the higher level scanners to give you guys some more review information on these scanners and, and, uh, how they work and how they're beneficial to you. So I would recommend this scanner to anybody, anyone that wants to learn about their car or get some values on the car or maybe read codes. Again, it only does the four systems, the airbag traction, transmission, and the engine module, Whew, getting old. Uh, but those are the four main important systems to the car. That's what you need to drive the car and the safety of the car. That's why they're coming out with these things. So, um, this would be good for, you know, like if you're looking to buy the car and you want to hook it up and see if there's any codes in those systems that are safety related. So uh, if you're a used car lot and you want to take a trade in, hook this up, you know, see, hook it up and see what's going on with the car before you take it, take a trade in. Because uh, who wants to trade in a car? People who don't want to put money into their car, right? They trade it in and give you, you know, uh, something that needs a timing belt or a timing chain or a new transmission. So um I wouldn't divert anyone from buying this. This is a good uh, level two or three scanner. You know, if you check out my review video on all the different levels of scanners from the basic OBD2 reader to the high end programmer, this is about the level two to three, three to four, somewhere in there, because you can't read all systems and you can't control anything. It's not bi-directional. 
Now you did see that it does retract in and expand the parking brake motors. That is bi-directional, but it's a small function as to what, what uh, you can do with other scanners, right? So uh, uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, check out my other review videos. There'll be a link down below to this scanner along with a coupon code to the scanner if you're interested in buying it. I'm not trying to sell this to you. I hope you liked the review and I hope it helped you make a decision, uh, decision on it. I am a very uh, indecisive purchaser. So how I got into doing reviews was I would watch other people's reviews and like it, it really didn't do much for me, you know? So uh, I feel like I can do a little bit better a review to show you all the functions of the scanner. And I'm actually a Mercedes-Benz dealer technician so I'm hoping that uh, the information I can provide is a little bit better than just some guy working in his garage that does one or two cars a week, right? Like I do cars all the time. Would I use this scanner in a professional setting? Yes and no. Yes, because I can read and clear fault codes from the engine or transmission or look up the data for the transmission if I was doing a transmission service and needed to see the uh, temperature of the transmission. I would use something like this, but when it comes to diagnosing mass amounts of cars, I do door issues, hatch issues, suspension issues. So I got to have a scanner that reads way more in depth, right? But I would use this for clearing fault codes that I know I'm going to create, or if I use my factory scanner to do everything for warranty, but then I got to get in there and clear the fault code really quick. Or maybe I, I made a fault code because I was testing stuff. I can just get in there and clear it. Or if a customer rolled in and just wanted to know a quick code or what's going on with it, I would plug it in, right? So there's uh, there's different means for people. The, the problem I have with these kind of scanners is once you get the fault code, what do you do with it, right? It doesn't walk you through test steps. It'll Google for you and it'll show you some guy who made a video on the fault code, but that's not really helping you understand why the fault code sets and how to diagnose the fault code. So that's the problem I have with all these aftermarket scanners is if someone were to come out with one that would diagnose it with you or show you why the fault code happened, we have to use systems like AllData and Identifix and Mitchell On Demand to get the fault code description in order to know why the fault code set in order to know how to diagnose it, all right? So there are caveats with, this, with these things is they'll lead you to water but it won't really teach you how to drink it, right? That's a kind of analogy I come up with. So um, I ramble. If you watch my videos, you know this. That's that's who I am. Sorry. Uh, the RD Diag 600S, I do like it. If uh, you're a company and you would like me to review your product, you can find me on Instagram. If you're a watcher of my videos and you have a car problem you really can't solve yourself or need a little bit of help, I will try to help you if you reach out to me on Instagram. Um, but if it's really in-depth diagnosis, I do work a job. I do have a family, so it's hard to take time away. But I don't mind reaching out to you guys and, and giving you some info if it's something quick, right? So uh, don't don't be afraid to reach out. You know, if you like my videos, reach out. If you hate my videos, keep it to yourself, all right? So uh, my name is Lou, Master Tech Lou channel. Hit the subscribe, hit the notifications. Check out my other videos. You guys take care. Thanks.